Hi, I'm Tyler Simone, and this is the Happily Self-Conscious Podcast, the show where it's cool to be self-conscious. As a personal development enthusiast, I love to learn how I can become better in all areas of life, and I want to share with you transformative tips and tricks to help you also become your best self. Together, we'll learn how we can become more self-conscious. Let's do it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here for episode number eight of the Happily Self-Conscious Podcast. I hope that everyone in California is safe after Hurricane Hillary. I am in Cali and I'm specifically in the IE or the Inland Empire. So we are having some rain and some wind. It's still Sunday at the time I'm recording this. So it's, it's still happening. You know, we're still in the middle of it. The rain and everything has been on and off for the past few days, but it hasn't been too crazy where I am, thankfully. I do know that there was an earthquake that hit the LA area a few hours ago, so I'm hoping that everyone is safe. I didn't actually feel it here where I am because I'm about an hour and a half or so away, so I'm not too sure that I would. And as far as the storm goes, my mom gave me some candles just in case. I went and bought a few things from the store, uh, just making sure I have everything that I need, but I'm pretty safe and sound. Other than that, I went to a conference this past week, so I'm pretty pumped up. I'm feeling inspired and I'm feeling motivated. I don't know if you've ever been to a conference before, but it's pretty magical. I went to a women's conference put on by the Inland Empire Women's Business Center, and I was surrounded by women who are starting and running their own businesses, and it felt really good to meet like-minded women who are making big decisions and following their dreams, which is exactly what this episode is all about. It's perfect timing. (laughs) This episode is all about following your calling. It is such a loaded topic of discussion and one that I've had on my list since the very beginning because I love reading about it, hearing about it, um, hearing about how other people have followed their callings, causing them to be extremely successful in their own ways. And I've really enjoyed my own process, keeping my purpose in mind to make decisions based on that inner knowing. A calling is something that we all have. When it comes to personal development and your own personal calling, they sort of go hand in hand because they both have to do with you, your ability to know what is for you and what is not, the ability to make good choices that align with your purpose and showing up in the world as your whole self. Your calling is directly linked with who you are because it has a lot to do with your soul, the core of your very being. And because it is so deeply rooted within you, to go all of your life not listening can cause a lot of suffering and sadness. You can only ignore it for so long before it really starts to affect you mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Your calling is sometimes referred to as your life's purpose or following your dreams. This is your deepest desire, that one thing that you just never stop loving or thinking about. Your calling drives you. It's your why. Why are you here? What did you come here to do? And when I say here, I mean (laughs) earth. We are all here for a reason, and that reason is your calling. Your calling is what makes you feel that life is meaningful. It makes your heart smile, and you feel good when you think about it. You know that one thing that you just can't stop thinking about? That thing that keeps you up at night sometimes? That thing that makes you smile when you think about it? That is your calling. It may not be a specific job or a specific role or position, and it's not about money. In fact, money has nothing to do with it at all. I think it's more of an action. It's that special something, that something that you could spend all of the time in the world doing and not get tired of it. You just know deep down inside that doing it will make you feel so at peace and so in love with life. 
you've probably tried to ignore it. We all have, knowingly or unknowingly. Or maybe you just haven't recognized the feeling for what it truly is. I like to refer to it as a whisper. It's like a push or a nudge. And sometimes it's a full-blown slap in the face when you've been ignoring it for too long. If you know, you know. As we go through life, We are constantly learning more about ourselves and making decisions that we feel are the right decision for us in that moment. But what happens when we are making decisions based on what we think we're supposed to be doing or listening to the noise outside of ourselves, getting wrapped up in expectations or pleasing other people? This happens when we are ignoring our calling and what makes us feel truly fulfilled and alive. I know that I've felt this before, and it is definitely one of the top three worst feelings, in my opinion. When you aren't following what lights you up inside, you might feel lost. You feel like you're not sure why you are where you are. Why am I showing up at this job every day that I don't enjoy? Why am I here? You know that feeling? Nothing seems to be working out. You might not feel like you're living up to your potential. The skills and gifts you have aren't being utilized. You know that you have so much more to give, but you're just going through the motions to get through the day. You have more to give, you have more to say, but you're just not able to give the way you want to give where you currently are. You're not excited to get up in the morning. Being in a positive state of mind is difficult sometimes, to the point where you might have to force yourself to be grateful for what you have because it's just not happening naturally for some odd reason. You might be in a good position. You finally got that job you've been striving for. You went to college and graduated with a certain degree and now your career is taking off. So the money is coming in and financially you're doing well for yourself, but you still feel like something's missing. No amount of money silences that feeling. No promotion makes you feel better long term. The success you've had so far has been fulfilling temporarily. The thing about your calling is you are the only one that can hear and feel it. Nobody else in the world knows what your calling is literally no one. And when you go against what you know deep, deep down to live your life the way other people say you should, you wind up unhappy, if not right away, eventually. The positions and roles you have will change, but your calling does not. It does and can look different though, and you can possibly fulfill it in many different ways. I have always known deep down that I love people, good people, (laughs) specifically. I've always valued connection and positivity, being able to be myself, sharing my feelings and ideas, supporting other people, cheering others on. And I know that because of my life experiences and yoga, actually. So I shared a little bit about this on my Instagram a few weeks ago. It was on the International Day of Yoga this year. I briefly shared my yoga story. So what happened was my mom enrolled me in a yoga class at a pretty young age. It was somewhere between six and eight years old. And this played a huge role in who I am today. It was there that I learned how to meditate, sit still, and listen to my inner voice, which is wild because that's a pretty young age. But sitting still and being able to tune into who you really are is so important when it comes to being able to hear your calling and your inner voice. In order to get clear on who you really are and what you really want, you have to shut out the noise. There is so much going on all of the time, which is why creating some sort of spiritual practice for yourself is more than necessary. Your calling will definitely speak to you no matter what, spiritual practice or not, but it's much harder to catch the signs and to know what is actually happening if you don't stop to listen. When I think about my life now, the decisions and the pivots that I've made, big or small, 
it's my calling that deserves the credit. It's guided me every step of the way. And I can say that this really started in college. My ability to hear the calling or the whisper has only gotten stronger and I rely on it pretty heavily nowadays. So what does following your calling look like? And are you following yours? When you are following your calling, you are magnetic. You radiate joy and you give off this energy that communicates to others that you are right where you're supposed to be and loving every minute of it. You're present and you're not looking to escape your current reality because it feels so right. You're in flow. You might be so into what you're doing that you lose track of time. You're happy to go to work or to do a certain activity. You actually enjoy doing it so much so that sometimes it doesn't feel like work at all because it aligns with what your heart desires. Even though I think that answering your calling is necessary to feel true joy, it isn't always easy. Sometimes you may have to disappoint a few people because they might see something different for your life. This reminds me of parents who push their children to go into a certain industry or maybe prefer that they take on the family business, you know, something like that. But to choose to follow your calling might mean that you will have to disappoint them. You'd have to choose yourself and what you know is right for you. To answer your calling, you might have to start saying no more often to jobs, to people, events, all kinds of things because they just don't align. You might be misunderstood. And this is a big one because you are the only one that knows what your path is. So to everyone else, what you're doing might make no sense at all. But to be honest, it only has to make sense to you. The last thing you want to do is try to get everyone around you to understand where you're going and what you're doing. Not only does it waste your energy, but it's just not your job. And there's really no amount of explaining that could allow someone to understand entirely. You might have to let some people or some things go. Letting go is a part of life, especially if whatever you're holding on to is making you second guess yourself or if your desires are being minimized. I think we've all gotten a call at this point in our lives, maybe once or maybe hundreds of times in subtle ways. And I'm pretty sure that we've all chosen to ignore the call and do something else for whatever reason. The only good thing that comes of that is that you do learn what it feels like not to answer the call. Knowing what it feels like to go against what you know is the right thing for you, it can be helpful because it does teach you more about what you don't want any more of. It reveals to you that that is not your path and that you have a little bit more listening to do, new decisions to make to be better aligned with what is for you. A calling is not something you can ignore for long. You can try, but it just, it just won't let up. One telltale sign that you are ignoring it is that what you want and what you're doing right now have nothing in common and it just doesn't feel good. Now, we can't always completely lean into our calling 100% for whatever reason, but if you aren't doing something to fulfill it, you'll know. For me, last year in 2022, I started to feel pretty unfulfilled. There was something that I was not doing and I knew it because I felt really stagnant and lost, honestly. I felt like I had something inside of me that I was not showcasing and it made me feel pretty sad and confused because I just couldn't figure out what it was. I wasn't working a job that I loved and I had stopped being creative. I needed to get still long enough to understand where these feelings were coming from. And after journaling about it and getting more into meditating, I realized that I had been silencing my desire to help other people and to connect. It took a while, but that 
is when I decided that mentoring was my next step. So in order to fulfill this desire, I started researching mentoring and different organizations that I could become a part of because I was being led that way by my calling. Your calling is not always super specific. I didn't know that mentoring was the answer, but I did know that it would allow me the chance to connect with others, share what I've learned so far in life, and be a leader. I couldn't have possibly come to the decision to apply and be a mentor without looking further into why I was feeling the way that I did. There is always a root to what you're feeling. Unhappiness, feelings of being unfulfilled is always coming from somewhere and it's usually because you have more to do or there's just something else you could be doing. There is a decision that needs to be made. There's a part of you that needs your attention and is waiting for you to acknowledge it. So you need to figure out what that something is for you. Because I've leaned more into my calling and I'm doing things like mentoring and hosting this podcast, which I love, I can still go to work and feel full. I don't feel empty anymore. And I think that that is really, really important to go every single day, just going through the motions, not doing something that you love is to go every single day a little less joyful and it starts to show itself in various ways. Following your calling doesn't mean that every day is magical and that you have no bad days. Life happens and we all go through ups and downs, but when you follow your calling, there is a sense of peace because whatever you're doing makes you feel joyful. So even if you can't go full force with following your calling at the moment because of your current life circumstance, I'm sure you can find a little bit of time to fulfill it little by little. Maybe you can start a side project, incorporate a new hobby that aligns with your calling, or volunteer in your free time. It's made a huge difference for me, and I'm sure it could help you too until the time comes when you can find a way to be fully immersed in what you're called to do. If you feel like you don't yet know what your calling is, what lights you up? What makes you smile when you think about it? It could be caregiving, performing, music, helping others live more authentically, uniting people together, maybe saving animals, helping your community, creating more community, inspiring others, motivating the youth, mindfulness, health and wellness. It can be a little hard to detect because you might just see it as a part of who you are, which it is. And maybe you haven't thought much of it, but it really can be just the thing to pay more attention to, to help you live a more fulfilling life. So spend some time, sit with yourself and trust yourself. Trust that you know who you are and what you need to be doing to wake up every single day full of joy and excitement because you get to do exactly what you've always longed to do. To end this episode, I have a quote for you per usual. Don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and then go and do that because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Thank you so much for being here and for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. There is so much more to come. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to click the follow button so you don't miss future episodes. And if you see another one on the list that you think looks interesting, take a listen or just download it for later. I'll see you next time.